One of the big issues this election cycle will no doubt be the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Um, but Democrats are hanging their midterm success on abortion. They think this is their winning issue. Republicans are barely even acknowledging their victory on the campaign trail, not talking about it very much. Yeah, check this out, though. In terms of spending on that issue, Democrats have spent around $12.1 million dollars and TV ads since that June 24th decisions. Republicans have spent about $79,000. I mean, Republicans clearly don't think this is an issue that is going to affect voters, right? Um, I generally agree with that. And I think Democrats feel like they've got to. So for more on this, let's bring in Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek. Um, Congresswoman, great to see you. You got a lot of these Democrats trying to make this the number one issue. That they're Right in the, in the spending shows, they think this is a big deal. Um, polling suggests it's not resonating. So I, I get it, and I think Republicans largely are playing this right. But I guess the question is, are Republicans being too cautious? Are they taking the left's attack serious enough? Well, Sean, good to see you both. Lindsay, your hair looks great, by the way. Um, <laughs> Thank you know, in, and in talking hello. about this issue on the campaign trail, it's really coming down to the kitchen table issues. When I travel around my district, my families, particularly the young working class families that I serve, they're worried about gas prices. They're worried about groceries. They're worried about the fact that you can't find baby formula or tampons on the shelves. I mean, women my age and younger, we're concerned about the fact that Biden is waging war on young women across this country. And I know that the left thinks that that automatically translates to one issue, which is abortion. But what Dobbs v. Jackson did was it returned the issue back to the states where people have a louder voice. So I think on federal level politics, this whole notion that the left is going to push really hard to codify Roe it's really a losing issue for them because what they're actually saying is that they want to legalize murder of infants up into the day before delivery. And that is a losing issue. I don't care if you're a Democrat, uh, heck, if you're a member of the Green Party, that is a losing issue. No sane person is for that, except if you are Nancy Pelosi or Jayapal or AOC. So for people in the real world, not living in swamp land or clown world DC, this is a losing issue. And it's not that we want to discount the win or the significance of this ruling. I say it was a tremendous win for the sanctity of life, but also for the sanctity of our constitution. But when you drive around everyday Main Street America, people are concerned about the fact that food is getting more scarce and more expensive, and the fact that it's virtually impossible to drive around because gas is so expensive. So I think it's about Republicans returning to issues that are winning with middle class America. And the Democrats are off on a ledge somewhere talking about issues that nobody really cares about. I do want to talk to you about the narrative, though, around Roe, because when you look at Democrats, they really focus on that they care about women. They care about women's health. This is what it's all about. Right now, you have the largest number of GOP women, 33, in the House. How important do you think it is for conservative women like you to be out there changing the narrative and updating messaging on support for working women, for fixing our foster care system, for welfare, systems that actually do support life and fixing those? It's so critically important. And Lindsay, you brought up a great point. We have been horrible when it comes to telling the story of why life is so precious. And the narrative from the left has been, oh, well, Republicans only care about life when it's in the womb. That's not true. That's why we are taking the next steps to make adoption more accessible and affordable. We're looking at reforming foster care systems. We're looking at how do we do a free market approach to maternity leave for working women. If you're pro-life, you have to be pro-life from womb to tomb, and that is a fact. We've also been looking at ways that we can support the special needs community and talking about the fight against those with special needs and organ uh, uh, discrimination cases. My district, we had the tragic story in case of baby Zion who was denied a heart transplant because he was a Down syndrome baby. And so there are all kinds of issues within the pro-life movement that still have so much work to be done and we have a long road to go. We're going to get there. We're gonna to continue to make progress. And I say, as you heard me say, that this was a win for the sanctity of life, but also our constitution. And for me, being the youngest Republican woman in Congress today, of course this is massive. This is you know, a, a movement that we've been waiting for, saying that we are going to be the post-Roe uh, post generation. It's real. 
But I also say that this is now an example of the law catching up to science. And it also exposes the double standard and hypocrisy of government. I mean, how is it that we classify bacteria on Mars as life, but not uh, a beating heart in the womb? Um, how is it that uh, the DOJ can say that a pregnant woman who is murdered is a double homicide, but if the mother decides to do it, then it's okay. It's such a double standard that exists. And I've said repeatedly that there are two victims when it comes to abortion. Abortion is not about women empowerment. It's about hurting women. And so we are going to continue to fight to be pro-life advocates. And I'm telling you, we've got a long way to go, but it's not going to be a driver for these midterm elections. It's interesting. You know, you, you talk about young women. Um, there are so many young Republican women running for office this cycle. Um, and I think it's, it's you're going to, like, be the leader of a caucus next cycle. Um, that, that you've got these women, Madison Gietzo, uh, Anna Paulina Luna, the list goes on and on. Um, and I think some of them are still in primaries, but I, I honestly think you're going to have your own caucus to lead. Um, I do, speaking of politics, though, I do want to switch uh, gears slightly because there's a lot of rumors about uh, form, former President Trump running again. Um, ironically, a lot of the talk, though, has started to center on whether or not he might face off against your governor, Ron DeSantis. Um, and, and there's stories now about um, you know, how, how that would face off. In fact, the New York Times has a poll that DeSantis is actually the only viable candidate uh, that could pose a threat to Trump, if you will, in the primaries. I guess the question I have for you is, when you talk to, like, constituents down in your district, in Florida, where you literally have him as a governor and then have Trump as a citizen, obviously further south, is, what, is there any sort of buzz among them? Yeah, you know, I think that the buzz really comes down to this. Republicans have an incredibly talented, deep bench of potential contenders, and the Democrats don't. We've got a guy who can't pronounce simple words, who stumbles and bumbles and falls off bikes. Um, and we have a, a very, very incredible long list of potential contenders for 24. But people are also quick to remind me, as I am them, that if we don't get 22 right, we're not going to be setting ourselves up for success in 24. So it all starts with taking back the House and the Senate and then delivering on the agenda, because if we don't, we don't deserve 24. And so for once in a long time, Republicans have got to set forward an agenda and then actually execute on that agenda. That's the important thing. So I know it's it, everyone's very excited about a potential uh, Trump uh, uh, on the top of the ticket again. I know I am. I would love to see Ron DeSantis there. I mean, we could go on and on about all the incredible people that could run. Yeah. But I'm focused right. on midterms because if we mess up on that, then it's a, it is a pointless conversation after that. I am the Congresswoman Karen Kelly, I'm glad you said that because it's so important to capitalize on these hopeful wins in 2022. Yes. Good to see you this evening. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Yeah. All right.